Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, today I'm going to be doing an uh, overclocking tutorial on an FX6100. Uh, I'm using a gigabyte board. Uh, also, I would like to point out one thing. Uh, please make sure you have uh, VRM coolers or a VRM heatsink on your VRMs. Uh, most, most boards do come with them, but for instance, certain ones of, uh, certain models of my motherboard didn't have it. Uh, I have a Gigabyte, what is it, uh, 970AD3, I think? But, uh, yeah, like, uh, the first versions of this motherboard didn't come with VRM coolers. Uh, other than that, guys, like just make sure you have one. I'll put a video in probably after this this uh, clip. It might be in the next one or might fit in this one. All depends. But uh, other than that, make sure you have a good CPU cooler. Uh, yeah, like I'm using the Noctua D14, so. I had an H50, for me it didn't quite cut it, for you it might, depending on the temperature of where you are and whatnot. Uh, other than that guys, I'll put a list of good coolers in the description so you guys can check it out. Other than that, let's get started. Uh, first thing you want to do is you want to go down to PC House Status. And you want to scroll down and turn off your fan, your CPU fan control. That's a smart fan. <clears throat> you want that off. Um, it's going to put your CPU fan on high all the time with it off. Which is good until you figure out your temperatures. And then if you can think you can get away with having it off, by all means turn it off. Uh, you also want to go and do advanced features, and then from there we can go to uh, AMD C1, turn that off, AMD C6, turn that off, virtualization should already be off, but if you turned it on, turn it off, uh, cool and quiet you want off, master mode you want off, and that's pretty much it in there. You don't need to worry about anything else. And then you go over to your... Sorry, I might have done that a little too quick. Uh, Intelligent Tweaker. This is where all your actual overclocking is going to be done. So you go in here. What you want to do is start off by going and taking your... CPU clock ratio from auto, you just hit enter and you bring it down and we're going to go to 4 gigahertz. If you want to go to like 4.2 or something, you can just bump it up to, to 21. But we're going to do 4 gigahertz. And then what I want you guys to do is disable Turbo turbo mode, that's your uh, <coughs> core performance boost. You want that off. Um, also, you'll need what else? Uh, this is just me. I like having my RAM down a little bit. You'll see why in the next video. Um, other than that, you just need to change your. Uh, voltage up a little bit here CPU core voltage we don't want to go that high we'll go to normal and then show you guys okay this number right trying to see my finger here we go uh, this number right here will be different on yours because it'll be a lot higher it'll probably be around four some four point or one point four somewhere around there um, don't worry about that because you haven't left the BIOS yet. I'm going to go up to 1.75 just so you guys can go in around 1.4-ish. 
Uh, that should do you guys. It It's probably overkill, so if you want to keep these settings after, I'll show you how to uh, back them down. <clears throat> but uh, for now, just try that. Um, another thing to quick quickly note is your DRAM control voltage, that's your RAM voltage, a lot of times it's going to be set like if you have HyperX memory or something like that <coughs> sometimes motherboards won't notice they're supposed to be 1.6 volts or 1.65 volts so just check to make sure you're, if you're a first time builder that your RAM is running on the right voltage <coughs> other than that guys let's hit F10 while we're here we'll just do a quick recap so you need to change the multiplier to 20 you need to disable turbo mode your perform core performance boost then you need to change your voltage other than that we're good to go just make sure you did everything else I just said before that you hit F10 you hit enter Saves your options. I'll be back once I get into Windows. Actually, I'll show you guys the post real quick. Okay, hey guys. Uh, this is a spare board I got laying around. My other, like, showing you guys in my case, it, the D14 is way too big. You can't even see my heat sinks, really. Uh, this is your VRM heat sink. Uh, if you don't have one, it's not the end of the world. It's not like your board is garbage or anything like that. It's just you can't overclock really high or anything like that. I don't really recommend overclocking without having a VRM cooler, but you can buy them for like next to nothing. You can buy a copper one for I think it's like five to seven bucks or something like that. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Like I said, don't worry if you don't have one. It's not the end of the world. Uh, but yeah, just try and make sure you have one. You don't really, really need one, but like I said, it helps a lot. But anyway, guys, uh, we'll go back uh, over there and uh, continue on.